Hi guys, welcome to my Hashashin guide. It's going to cover everything for Awakening and Succession. So pretty much everything will be laid down below in the in the description. And for the most part, guys, uh, BDO is always updating the game. So naturally, Hashashin is also going to be changing. And I really can't keep making these guides. So if you guys would, uh, hit, hit the sub button and watch the videos. I'm always posting PvP. I'm always sharing what I learn. And also, start following me on Twitter. I'm going to be posting there a lot more. Anything I learn about Hash, I'll be posting there. And just in general, you guys can join the community Discord. You guys can follow along, comment down below. But really, a good way to learn and kind of stay up to date with like what's happening in the game is to kind of watch the videos because I'm one of the few people that kind of post Hash content. Also, Musa content, you guys are looking for that as well. All right, guys, now very important for the Hashashin is my, my FPS recommendations. So whether you're Awakening Succession, you want as much FPS as possible. A uh, general rule in BDO, for those of you guys that might be new to the game, the more FPS you have, the faster you're actually going to attack in the game. Whenever it comes to any fighting game you play, most likely they're going to be capped at 60 FPS. But BDO is one of those games where it's uncapped, so uh, that creates a very big disparity in attack speeds and damage ratios sometimes, and even um, stuttering, which can cause damage loss and just things like that and desync. Because of that issue in the game, uh, you're going to want to exploit as much FPS as you can as possible. So I'm going to give you guys my FPS optimizations. I'm going to give you guys an internal game setting, in-game setting, and then I'm going to give you guys my graphics card settings, okay? So, uh, for the most part, um, come over to performance. So, under graphics and textures, when you guys are doing anything serious like PvP or PvEing, come down to low and very low at the very least. If you want to go the extra mile, you can go lowest optimal. I personally just go on very low, and then I turn my anti-aliasing off. Other than that, come to optimization, and make sure everything here is ticked off, except for the miss effect. You're going to want that on, obviously. Under camera effect, you can copy what I have what I have here. Workers and pets, this is what you guys can copy. Under uh, display settings. Um, you can come down to effects and you can kind of copy what I got here if you guys would like. If you guys are colorblind, you guys can use this. We have camera graphics settings, so just pretty much copy what I have. And you guys are good to go. And if you guys want to make cool screenshots, like I can make some cool screenshots sometimes, I come down to PNG in this 8K resolution. A little bit of a tip there. And now we can talk about some external settings. Alright, now what you're going to want to do is you want to open up your NVIDIA control panel. And if you have an AMD card, I'm sorry, you're out of luck, but you're, you're going to probably have to Google these settings. All right, you're going to come over here to adjust image settings preview. Use my preference emphasizing. Click on this, drag it all the way down to performance, click apply, and then click back onto use 3D advanced image and then click apply. Okay. Now, we're going to come down here to manage 3D settings. So for this part, you guys are just going to copy what I have here. Whatever you have that I don't have, just leave it. And whatever uh, I might have that you don't have, just don't worry about it. But for the most part, try to copy as much as possible as you can from here. I'm going to scroll down. Feel free to pause the video. I'm going to scroll down very slow. I'm going to scroll down very, very slow. All right, cool. Next thing is... The next thing is, guys, make sure your main monitor for what you PvP on or play the game on is on your maximum refresh rate. I have 144. And then you can uh, you can make your output dynamic range full. Use NVIDIA color settings. And then do the same thing for your second monitor. I have a 75 hertz second. And then just click apply. And then you guys are good to go. And now, guys, uh, whenever you play BDO, <laughs> uh, just go in full screen mode, go in low settings. You're going to see your FPS boost. I probably just boosted your FPS by like 60 plus, not not joke. Another tip I have for FPS is your UI, guys. Um, whenever you're PvPing or PvEing, turn off as much as the UI as possible. So the more of the UI elements you turn off that are unnecessary, you actually get more FPS as well. So if you turn off your chats, your menu button, your leveling bar, your function bar, these little things, they can uh, really boost your FPS. If you're PvPing, the only thing you should really be able to see is your chat and your kill feed for the most part, and maybe like your um, icons here. Uh, those few things are going to boost the hell out of your FPS, and it's going to give you guys a lot more success in PvP. I'll just keep it very simple and just keep it short and sweet, okay? Hashashin is currently accuracy starved, and 
You need to have bags on, and you also have to go evasion. You cannot go ev you cannot go human damage DR hash currently, simply because of the fact that we cannot build enough DR. We are too squishy. With so evasion is like our only safe bet to go. As far as the bags versus levers, you totally can go levers. However, you're looking at 700 gear score PvP. Uh, it's a difference of 25 accuracy and 7 DR with the bags versus 32 evasion. And when we're talking about 700 gear score players and beyond that, the accuracy will be more beneficial to you. Whereas the 32 evasion, you're not going to really feel it much. It's not going to really do anything at that point. Trust me, it's not. That's pretty much the TLDR on that. This first build will kind of be like your general fragging build. So if you're just coming out of seasons, uh, don't worry so much about like what to buy at Tet. Just finish seasons and then when you're out of seasons, you can make a lot of money now. Um... From that gear, just purchase this gear you're looking at here. This will kind of be like your best bet. And once you get it all, it's going to put you at a good point to where you guys can start experimenting with other builds. Having multiple builds is very important for this game if you're going to be PvPing. If you're a PvEer, just, just disregard this. If you're someone who really enjoys PvP, I strongly urge you to build multiple builds so that you have them and that you're able to counter people as needed. As you get more experience with PvP, you're going to be able to see when to use these builds by yourself. So. I won't have to explain too much. Second build that you can run once you guys get to this point is a Nuva offhand swap, which will be pretty cheap. So this will get your AP up higher. And this is actually what why the bags are superior to the Libras with this build. Because not only will it not make a difference, but it's going to allow you to run human damage DR when you need it on half. It's not viable, but there is uses for it 100%. If you need the accuracy offhand, you can get 96 extra accuracy with this. So it can help you with evasion. You can further increase that with a Tetra belt swap. You can run an evasion offhand if you think someone is lacking accuracy. You want to take it even a notch higher, you can run a centaur belt with the evasion offhand, so giving you an extra pretty much 50 evasion. Um, if you want to take it up a notch even higher, you can run a Kaji ring. You'll be like a DP meme. So if you can actually one combo someone you're fighting with 233 AP, uh, this build will be pretty funny to run on somebody. Um, nonetheless, you can also run a CC resistance build, which we'll talk about with the artifacts later. But you can run a diamond uh, necklace, or you can run a ruby grapple resistance necklace. This really depends. Very specific build to use. Uh, you would really only ever use something like this against classes that might lack like a grab penetration passive. You'd be very surprised at how these builds can actually kind of counter people. Uh, and finally, we'll get to the end game building. So once you guys get to your end game, right, you got your hitting all these builds here. This is what you want to build after you come out of season. This is what you're aiming for. Uh, just get pen, pen crescent rings, pen ogre, two pen black stars, and C20 armors. You'll be at 310, 312, 40. Just very standard. And of course, when you have this kind of gear score, these other builds that you can run on top of that will be even stronger. Even stronger. It's even more recommended to get the build. Uh, the general dream build for hash is a few of them. Uh, one of them is you can run accuracy off pen with pen debos. I strongly recommend that you don't go for Lunar and Turbo Belt on Hashashin. Hashashin actually scales very well with higher AP. Uh, he's similar to Musa, where AP scaling is very, very, very effective on him. And you want to build as much of it as possible. But then, you run into the issue of not having enough accuracy. What I would recommend is that you run... You have your standard Kudum build, but I would have an accuracy offhand backup. Another alternative is that you can run Kudum and then just run two Dawn Earrings as well instead of the Disto. And um, you can even also consider running an Evasion offhand with a little bit of accuracy elsewhere too. Some like standard builds you guys can consider. Either way, you're either going to be stacking Evasion or you're going to be stacking Act. But I'm assuming if you have this kind of gear, you'll just have access to everything anyway. So not that really big of a deal, but I would recommend going the Devo route. Don't go for Lunar Turo on Hash Ocean because... We just need the AP scaling. You're going to have to sacrifice your accuracy elsewhere, pretty much. But that's what I recommend for your gearing items on Hash. As far as crystal builds, guys, um, goes, there's actually a lot that you can run now with the new crystal presets. And I have actually made a few I would like to share with you guys. So, um, here's one of them. This is kind of like, like well, this is kind of like one of the basic crystal builds that I use um, most commonly. Uh, basically... It's going to be two Glorious, Gallantry, Olicus, Glorious Special Evasion, Elkar, Red Spirits, um, Red Cabalanus, Jin Harpias, and the very standard stats for Hashashin. You can get a good amount of HP, good amount of accuracy, special evasion, decent amount of evasion. What more can you ask for? Um, 
I would pretty much pair this crystal build up with the Kudum build. Like when you want to do like general fracking and like an all around build, that's when you would use this crystal build. That's like your most common build you'll be using for the most part. If you want to start running a uh, grapple resistance on someone, you can just swap out your Cabellinus crystals, like the red Cabellinus that I was recommending. And you can just put in RBF sturdiness, which it's just going to give you grapple resistance. That's totally all it does. Related to that build, you can also replace the Cabellinus with RBF Adamantine to get kitty resistance. So this is kind of what I was talking about with like that Manos necklace, you, either the ruby or the diamond. Um, you can start running grapple resistance and then you can run like a different artifact set and you'll be kind of cringe in 1v1. <laughs> it's pretty cringe. On top of that, you can start using ignore KD resistance crystals as well. Jin, um, pretty much just replace your Cabellinus and Olicus and then you can run that and then... You can have an ignore CC resistance build in case someone's kind of memeing you with that. Uh, another build you can run that's also like related to all of this. You can pretty much start running like ignore grapple resistance, right? Like example, a class like Lawn or like Ninja or Hash would really like these kind of crystals. They love these kind of crystals, for example. So if you need to shred an evasion meme, you can pretty much replace your corrupted and then Cabalanus crystal slots with ensnare and precision. So instead of getting 70 accuracy, you can get another 102. So you can pretty much pair this up with your accuracy offhand and like accuracy artifacts. And then on the flip side, you can replace those same crystals and get extra evasion and paired up with your evasion offhand and centaur belt and evasion artifacts. Now, this is a very this is the build that I have been testing and I have found it really useful. It's actually saved my ass a couple times. And basically, the idea with this build is that sometimes you just might fight someone who is hitting you. They just, they're just not missing. And in that context, evasion isn't helping you. What you need to do in that context is either two things. Either build HP or build DR. And um, when you're fighting someone who's just hitting you 24-7, this crystal set will give you an extra 44 DR. So you would want to also pair this up with like a DR artifact like zone combination, which we'll talk about in a little bit here. So if you're fighting someone who's like a DR class, like, right, where you don't need as much accuracy either. For example, like a class that can hit super hard that are like really squishy. DK, for example, is like a really big one, right? They can hit super hard, but they're really squishy. This kind of build where they might have a lot of accuracy can really, really, really mess with them. And then might save you. I've been using it a couple of times. It's been really helping me out. So... I recommend having it as like a backup crystal build and um this is an attack speed set on hashashin i recommend you guys try it out you just replace kobe's with akrads and you just get like a little more attack speed it's kind of fun but uh those are pretty much all the crystal builds i recommend all right so as far as artifacts goes guys i write i use a few sets i don't use that many on my hashashin um one of the main ones i use is i use accuracy ones so i'll use uh Two, uh, two magic accuracies with just all marked. Another build that you can do, um, you can do two marked and two ground. So you'll get some down attack damage. You'll get even more accuracy. But you lose some DR. So it's kind of like the blur set, but for accuracy. You can use it against evasion memes. Um, I use this set pretty much when I am running Kudum sometimes. If I need it, if I feel like. But most of the time I'm using blur, so... That's two all evasion, and then I use uh, iridescent waves, wall, and mind. I, I just pretty much abuse blur. Blur is a really good side effect. It yeah, to some new players, you might get a little bit daunted that it negates your resistance, but you're gonna be playing fully protected anyways. So if you're getting caught, you're just messing up, in my opinion. Uh, when you want to run a CC resistance, just swap out this these light stones for all waves, and then you can get like plus fifty evasion. And then you won't lose any resistance. You just won't have any extra DR. But uh, that build will just be really good for the CC resistance build if you need it. But essentially, those are the only artifacts that I use. Aside for like PvE, I have a monster damage build that I use here. And then of course we have... Uh, and of course we got the EXP one. So those are really all the artifacts I use. You can pair those up with any of the crystal builds that are pretty much labeled in the guide I put up earlier. And then you want to mix and match them with the build. So for example, when I'm running around with my Kudum and my basic build, like I'm running around with like equal geared people, I'll just use this. If I'm finding someone who's slightly a little bit higher geared than me, and I think that I need the accuracy to, to catch the combo them, 
I'll, I'll use this, right? If I'm finding someone who's like an evasion meme, I'll pop on this. You guys see what I'm saying? And then you would pop on the accuracy crystal preset, right? It's pretty simple to kind of pair everything up. It's like kind of common sense. And like if I'm going to go evasion, I'm going to wear blur, right? So this is how you're going to pretty much like pad your stats. But that's essentially all you need to do, guys. It's pretty simple how you want to use these builds. But uh, artifacts are really simple. Uh, if you guys have any questions about artifacts, let me know down in the comments. There's a couple of other artifact builds you can use too. And if you guys want to get in the know of those, you're going to have to subscribe and uh, watch the videos because we'll be getting a lot of builds in the future. All right, guys, let's start talking about Awakening Hishashin. So this is going to be for pretty much how you're going to want to build your hop bar, your skill build, bonds, all that jazz, okay? So the only thing you guys need to lock is I would definitely lock your rage transfer. Listen, we're greedy. We're not transferring our rage. I don't care for you, Zerkers. I'm sorry. And uh, don't and lock your evasion. Lock this, okay? Other than that, you're not locking anything else in the kit. You need everything, okay? All right. So as far as your bond goes, there's two. There's two bonds you can use, and I'm gonna explain this. The main one you're gonna be using is Sin Splitter because Sin Splitter becomes a bound, and you can go through frontal guards with this. Okay? It's very strong. The other one that you can use is Serpent's Coil, becomes a knockdown, very OP in large scale. This will become pretty much your uh, essay after that, so there will be no CC on that, but you'll have that for large scale. You can swap between the two. You can also use Sin Splitter in large scale, it just really depends on what you're doing. Uh, they're both viable, I really recommend you guys experiment with both of these bonds and play around them both. I think for like small scale skirmishes, Sin Splitter will be better. But if you're doing like true large scale PvP, I think Serpent's Coil is pretty busted. Um, as far as your your uh, Rabombs go, your skill enhancements, you want Prophecy Blade, you want Mirage Assault, and there is an option here between Shadow Slicer and Sand Tornado. Sand Tornado has since been buffed. I like Sand Tornado personally on Awakening. Uh, I think specifically for Awakening it's better. Uh, basically, uh, it is now a stun and they fix the gap on the beginning. So it's a super armor right before the attack hits and that's also a stun. It's also very mouse movable. So if you look, it's very good for clipping back attacks. It's super cheap. Okay, and it's a stun. So a lot of you guys that might prefer this one, which I'll talk about in a second, Shadow Slicer. Are probably wondering that kind of removes the rupture outplay on on hash rupture can definitely be used i personally don't like to use rupture all that much it's up to you but if you want to access rupture all you have to do is do the rebomb press s one just tap s and then you can do rupture so like for example so look i'm gonna rebomb tap s and i can rupture it's just a little slower whereas with shadow slicer it's going to be instant okay now the other option is that you can use Shadow Slicer, right? Personally, I think that that with Sand Tornado, it, it flows better for Awakening, for the ball fights. Especially when you consider the fact that if you're running that Serpent's Coil Bond, you can literally Sand Tornado in a ball and then Serpent's Coil. It's mad cheap. Mad cheap. Okay? Shadow Slicer has its own perks too, though. So it's really up to what you guys want to run. So let me go ahead and run this over here. All right, boom, now we got Shadow Slicer. So Shadow Slicer's main perk is that you can do this. That's the main perk. And then you can do that twice as often, right? Uh, pretty unsafe, you can get knocked out of this. Uh, for the most part, you kind of won't because you won't be using any other people for the most part. However, the other thing that's kind of useful about this uh, bomb, about this uh, bomb is that you can see swap grab as well, which is also really strong. So. Uh, consider that, but you can also do the C swap grab from the other bond too. But uh, really, I think it's preference up to you guys. They're both excellent bonds. Play around with it, see what you like. All right, guys. So for PVP, this is these are the add-ons for Awakening Hash. Okay, you guys can pretty much just copy it. Now, if you want PVE add-ons, all you have to do take the Crown Kick add-on and swap this for Monster Damage and Critical Hit Damage. 
don't overstack monster damage on a lot of the skills here. The reason for that is because when you do this, it's a 7 second cooldown, okay? And the add-on lasts for 10 seconds, so th there's no point to like... <laughs> there's no point to overstack monster damage, you're just losing efficiency, you see what I'm saying? So just keep that there. Alright guys, now as far as your like hotbar goes, this is what I recommend. Put Haladi Throw on, Haladi Assault, Alt Breath, Descent, Quicksand, Sin Splitter, Sand Tornado, and Silent Breach, okay? The reason why you put Sin Splitter on your hotbar is because when you do Collapse and Sin Splitter, there's certain instances where it causes a baby version of Sin Splitter to come out where it won't do the full like distance. It happens a lot, it's a bug. So to circumvent that, just hop bar it, okay? Just just to circumvent that, just hop bar it. Anyways, um, aside from that, uh, that's pretty much everything you need. You can also put Silent Breach on there. You don't need it, but it is useful. Uh, there is a couple of other skills that you can hop bar, but I find them not that useful. These are pretty much like the most important ones. Okay. Yeah, that's pretty much like your entire skill build in hop bar. Let's go ahead and talk about Hashashin and uh, talk about the engages and whatnot. All right, guys. So essentially, um, and my old hash guide, I had a movement guide, and I think that the movement guide is actually really good. So we're just going to reuse it. There's a little bit of differences since then, like new ways. So I'll explain that, but I'm going to go ahead and play it. That's going to be an excellent way for you guys to learn the movement. So here you go. All right, so essentially that should kind of simplify some of the movement. There is some differences, guys. Uh, the tornado has since been buffed. <laughs> you can just instantly teleport now. Really OP. <laughs> but you think you don't have to C-swap anymore. So that made it a little bit easier. Um, another thing, too, is that they've added a Silent Breach to the kit. So you can just do Silent Breach. And they buffed the distance on the Silent Breach. It's really OP, okay? So when you guys want to do a movement from Silent Breach, it's insane. So like literally, look at this. Okay, like watch. Silent Breach in the Slicer is amazing. Like it's amazing movement. So make sure you guys are utilizing that. And another thing I can say you guys should utilize is uh, Tab Cancel Haledi Assault. So um, basically Haledi Assault you want to be using as much as possible because it, it can regen your stamina. And if, as you can see, I told you guys to hop bar it. Well, you can't hop. You see how you can't hop bar it, right? So, the trick is, is that if your weapons are sheathed, you can use it and go into pre awakening, right? So the trick is, is that you're gonna iframe, you're gonna walk, and then you're gonna tab, and then you're gonna do this simultaneously. Your hop bar button, but you're just gonna do it really fast. So what happens is, so look, I'm an awakening, right? I'm just gonna do it really fast. It's just called it's called the tab cancel. Um, 
you have another tab cancel too that's like actually really important um and it's also going to be considered for movement but you can tab cancel your block jump actually insane that we can do that um it basically same trick but you're gonna you're gonna tab cancel your block jump so you're gonna tab an e so i'm gonna tab cancel this um mine imp watch watch this it's insane So you can see you get the float but it cancels when you're walking so really op because uh you can tab cancel so I mean, that means you can hop or anything so for example right you see what i'm saying <laughs> or you can even helady assault it's insane so uh make sure you guys uh utilize this Alternatively, you can also Silent Breach, but it's problematic because it it will really mess up with the CC. So, for example, like if you just you don't want to do that. You want to use that separately. So, do the tab cancels I've been showing. Aside from that, aside from like Silent Breach getting buffed, uh, you also have Purge Cancel. So, Purge Cancel will oh, enact a double iframe. So, basically. If you slicer and you hold shift, um, and you hold like a direction and iframe, you'll do two iframes, so watch. Also really nice for movement, because, you know, you can cover distance. It's also, it's also good for engaging, so. Something you want to learn, you also have your, obviously, your, your bomb, and then, of course, Island Breach. That's really anything else that just got added. There's not much el anything else new for movement. Just get good at comboing everything. So, as you can see, we're out of stamina, so you can't just blow everything up like that. But. Uh, just know how everything cancels, learn how to use like these big leaps with hourglass and you'll be fine. This is just going to take you some practice. Alright guys, time to start talking about engaging on Ashashin. So there are quite a lot of engages on Hash and this is what I was telling you guys that you need to actually know what you're doing. So what I recommend for you guys is that you actually do utilize every engage but you need to understand that with Hashashin, there's two kind of ways you can go about it. You can play a very risky playstyle, or number two, you can play a very safe playstyle. Um, me personally, with how reboots are, I choose to play very safe, um, and I I take calculated guesses on like when I'm going to go unsafe, right? So what I recommend is that you guys learn every engage tool that Ashashin has, and then through experience you're playing the game and PvPing, you're going to figure out what you guys want to do. Okay? So what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you every engage tool that we have. The tricks you want to want to learn and it's up to you guys to put it together and use it at your discretion and just go from there because Hashashin is a bit of a risky class. He doesn't really have um, fully protected engages besides one at this point, but we'll, we'll just take that for what it is. So first and foremost, you have your grab, right? And uh, they buff the grab at this point. You don't have to cancel anymore for grabs. So literally... Get good at getting into your grab from anything, from pre-awakening into awakening, C-swapping out of certain skills. Get good at grabbing, okay? Um, I-frame backwards and grab people, on how to bait people with it. Your grab's awesome, it's range, big hitbox, wide, OP grab, right? One thing that I would recommend for you guys as, as a hash main, uh, I would make one rule about the grab, and that is when you guys are engaging people, never grab unless you have this up, your tornado. And what you want to do, it's something from fighting games is called the option select so you're gonna grab and you're gonna mash you're gonna mash the f button okay so what happens is is that if you miss the grab you're going to just teleport back to your tornado hopefully you'll be away from your opponent and you won't get caught for missing missing a grab if the grab lands and you spam f you will not teleport it does not cancel out so it's an option select so if you want to have the most success with your grabs without getting caught I recommend doing this rule that I just taught you. Never grab unless your tornado's up. Okay, number two, Sin Splitter. Sin Splitter is a really good engage. It goes through points of the card. 
You do need to be careful though, because at the very end, there's a little bit of a gap. They have changed it since. There used to be a gap at the end, but you can kind of get into your super armors quickly. So just make sure that you aren't lingering this, because the super armor will end quite quickly. Make sure that you uh, go into another essay afterwards, and then you go from there, right? Um, alternatively, when you guys end up opting for the bond where you swap out Sin Splitter and you Serpent's Coil, right? Now you'll have this as an engage, as a huge engage, right? So, basically now this will become a super armor. And what you're going to want to start utilizing is Collapse Sin Splitter. So this is, this is a cancel that a lot of people don't talk about. But essentially, um, Collapse has a pretty big hitbox and they buffed it and they made it quicker, of course. If you got your attack speed buff up, this is going to be amazing. But essentially, if you iframe to the left or right and you do Collapse and then you do Sin Splitter... It'll insta cancel a collapse and the float will come out and then you can just go into SA. So watch. Just like this. So you're going into an unsafe skill into an SA. It's a very small gap. It's very unlikely you're going to get hit, but you can get caught. I'm just letting you know that at your discretion. So you can even do it that quick and the float will come out. So I would uh, utilize that when you guys are using that bond. I don't really recommend the collapse spawn. It's not very good. Um, other than that, uh, that's kind of like how you want to look at engaging safely with hash. The next thing is going to be um, your piercing tornado. Now, I recommend that you guys actually put piercing tornado on your hotbar. I actually don't see a lot of hashes do this, but you can actually tab cancel into the piercing tornado. So, what a lot of hashes end up doing is they end up doing this. But that's like unsafe, right? There's a big gap there with Slicer. Um, so what I recommend is that you tab cancel into it. So watch. See? Tab cancels are very important in this class. So um, I would tab cancel that and do put it on your hotbar. Aside from that with your engages, guys, um, I would start getting very good at anticipating when you are going to get hit. So a lot of hashes will just kind of like just do this, right? Their Q. And if you hold LMB, it'll do the block jump and then you'll hit their back, right? So, what I recommend is that you guys use this on reaction. So when you think you're about to get hit by like a ranged attack or something, just go like this and hold LMB. So that they can't react to it. You want to make it an unreactable skill. And then when that's down and you have nothing unsafe up, start utilizing your back Q. Your back Q will do the same thing and it works off a separate cooldown. So you can actually do that two times, right? So... These are some things that I would recommend that you guys actually start utilizing. Another engage that I have been experimenting with recently that I don't see a lot of hashes doing is actually Haledi Throw. They buffed Haledi Throw and it's really good now. So um, it's a little weird because of the Abyssal skill, but I found a workaround for it and it's going to have to be tab canceling once again. But um, they buffed this and as you can see, it's really fast and they also fixed the bug with it. The stiffen's is pretty reliable. So you can get a stiffen every four seconds at this point and... It's literally a better version of Stab Arrow on Musa, if you know how to use it correctly. And I can kind of explain to you how you want to do this. So, um, there's actually going to be certain matchups where you're going to want to, like, stay away from people. Like, you don't want to trade them, or you just want to catch them for range stuff. Like, for example, if you know a ninja's about to, like, do, like, a dash at you, if they're going to do, like, um, like, Malice. Or if you know, like, your striker's going to do, like, a flash step, or, like, a mystic will flash step you and your grab is down. Um, what you can do is actually plan the back pedal. And then you can like, you can keep this NATO up and just keep kiting. And what you can actually do is you can, you can iframe, tab cancel, and then Haledi throw, right? And after Haledi throw, I found a little bit of a root, a flow as you wish, that actually connects really well. And it keeps you pretty protected. So what I like to do is I like to iframe, tab cancel, and then I go into Haledi throw, and then I'll do Haledi assault. And then if I see a stiffen, I'll, I'll hold LMB so Slicer comes and I get a stun, right? So you're going to do stiff stun. And if you're hitting them with a Haledi Assault, you're going to do a minus 10 DP debuff as well. So in fast motion, it's going to be like this. Okay, now let's say we landed a stun here. Then what you're going to want to do is go behind them. Accuracy buff if you need it. And then simply... Go into this and then go into some damage. Go into a reset if you even want to. But um, that's how you can kind of catch people with that. So I'll do it one more time for you. Really good combo. Another engage that I would utilize, guys, is obviously um, 
So since Piercing Tornado is really good at equipping Vernal Guards and stuff, a lot of people don't do this, but um, what you can end up doing is like, let's say like there's like two or three people here and they're just kind of waiting for me to engage them. You can catch them off guard by doing your rub bomb and then doing Piercing Tornado. Because what'll happen is, is you'll TP behind them and then if you piercing NATO like a little bit to the side, you'll clip like their front and their back in a sense if they don't react. So what happens is, is you go like this. Just like that. You want to go to like the side and um, it's really good. I, I've caught in a lot of people like that with hash and it's a really strong engage. So that's another thing that you can consider. Um, and of course we have our block jump, right? So our block jump is really strong. Uh, I don't recommend doing it just like this, like all willy nilly. If you have to, then you're going to have to do silent breach out to be safe. But like I said earlier, just tab cancel. Uh, tab cancel your block jump. It's the best bet. And then just do just do any hop bar after that, you know, so. Something like that. And then just after here, just do any tab cancel. That's what I recommend. Um, also, you have you now have silent breach. So this is a super armor before this skill, and then when you're pretty much throwing out the CC, it's going to be unprotected. Um, this skill is also really good at clipping frontal guards, so I would try to aim this like to like the side of your opponents, so, like to their side. And then you see right there, I just did WRMB. It's the baby sin splitter. That's what I was talking about. That's why you want to hop our sin splitter. Um, but uh, yeah. So make sure that you guys um, are utilizing Silent Breach. Um, if you want to get really risky with that, you can Slicer and then RMB. Really unsafe though. Um, Purge is excellent for caching people as well. It, like, and then you can do Purge right after that. And then if you have the Shadow Slicer, you can do Purge as well. And of course you have your... Um, and of course uh, Rupture is also really good at caching people too. So make sure you guys use that. And another really fantastic CC, of course, is Purge. And aside from that, you also got uh, Hourglass. These are all risks, though, as I said. But these are pretty much all the tools you can use to catch people. Use it at your own discretion. All right, guys. So really quick, before we start the combo section, I just want to go over the uh, uh, self buffs that you guys are going to want to understand. A little bit of a Hashash and Spiller damage because... Hushashin has some scenarios, a little bit of di different gimmicks that you can do that other classes can't do. Um, first and foremost, uh, get used to doing this pre-buff rotation. Okay, This is what you should be doing in large scale at the very basis. This gives you all your pre-buffs that you need. When you're in 1v1, I would shorten this to just this. Okay, And then, of course, you can put your tornado up. The reason why I'm telling you guys to shorten the pre-buff for 1v1s is because when you 1v1, you're going to grab or you're going to hit a CC and then most typically you're going to want to actually hit Inquisition so that you proc your critical hit rate and then that's actually going to stack on top of um, your crown kick critical hit rate right here. So you're going to get a bonus a 50% critical hit rate. This is going to greatly increase your damages. As far as the filler damage that I was talking about guys, at the very end of your combos, always note that you can uh, fit in your rub bombs because right when they get up, depending on what class they are, you can get away with doing shift D and then shift X because these have um, pretty big hitboxes and the Mirage Assault has a really good hitbox and it's going to follow people. So a lot of the times when they try to get up, you can risk going for that. Um, it's pretty risky against grab classes, but if you're fighting classes that don't have a grab or classes that aren't going to be able to kind of react to a 180 flip as quick, uh, this can be really good filler damage for you.
All right, guys. Now we're gonna get into succession. Guys, the succession portion for Hashashin is gonna be much shorter because I'm gonna be real with you. There isn't much to talk about. The class is very simple. Just very, 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 very simple. Okay. So, so for your skills, you guys are not gonna lock literally anything. Some people like to lock Paradise beckons, but I think you should use it because you can use some cool down smashes with that comp with that skill. But uh, essentially, um. Skill enhancement wise, I would definitely use Shadow Slicer, use Mirage Assault, Privacy Blade. Don't use San Tornado and Suck, it's just better to use Shadow Slan Slicer because it combos better with Succession Prime uh, Slicer. Um, and then of course, for scale add-on, this is what you can use for PvE. And as for PvP add-ons, I got a picture of it for you right here. This is what I recommend. So that would pretty much cover like your building on him. As far as like hot barring, uh, you can hot bar uh, all's command if you really want. I don't think you really need to. But uh, do uh, but um, I have all's breath, descent, uh, prime blades packed, blinding spirals, shadow slicer, and then I just have Hawaii. That's pretty much really all you need on your on your hot bars and things like that. You don't need to lock anything. I would definitely recommend that you keep uh, the black spirit rage open. So whenever you want to do alt, I'll just unlock it with alt B and lock it, depending on how you're going to be using it. But that's how I would use that. But other than that, I would, uh, this is all I would do for the skill tree for succession. Now talking about succession movement, it's actually very, very simple. Succession movement pretty much is going to revolve around slicer spam, which is very stamina hungry. So I'll show you in a minute. But since you with succession, you get two iframes. So it's like a separate cooldown. So I'll definitely have a cooldown slot for that so you can see it. But essentially, um... With, with Succession Slicer, you can cancel out of anything with Slicer. So, something that I would get used to doing and practicing is going to be Slicer Spam. So, it's going to look like this. So, basically, you would uh, hold your Q block, you would Slicer, iframe, Slicer, iframe, Slicer, and then that would use your double iframe there. And then what you can do after that is you can do Shadow Slicer. So, look. You see that? It's a lot of movement, right? That gets you um, more. And what's really crazy is that you can Shadow Slicer and iframe again. So let me demonstrate that. So as you guys can see, uh, there's a lot of Shadow Slicers that you can do. <laughs> Outside of that, of course, if you want to add more movement, Piercing Tornado, you got your Hourglass Cancels, Rebomb. You can use this teleport to move around and get, get safely and kite. You can WF and then you can RMB. Um, thing is with Succession Hash is that you run out of stamina a lot. So what you, I really recommend, the way you kite people is going to have to be around this. So get really creative in where you put that tornado when you're PvPing. Um, I recommend playing as defensive as possible in Suck Hash. You can't, you can't go for engages on him. So let's, let's say we're having a fight here. The spot that I would try to play around is right here. So I come down here, and like, if I need to kite get stamina back, I'm just gonna be cheap and just do this. And then let's say they come up chase me, H hop off, boom. So, you gotta play very cheap on Succash, because your stamina is one of the worst in the game. Talk about the engages on Succession Hashashin. So, it's uh, pretty linear. So, pretty much you got Blinding Spirals. And with Blinding Spirals, the way you want to aim this is like, let's say that rock is an opponent. You want to throw your cursor right here, pretty much. Like, a little bit to the right or to the left. So that the tornado will hit here. And then it'll hit their back. Um, that's one variation to get to get catches. Um, you can do a lady throw. But uh, I don't recommend it. <laughs> Not on suck. And then number three, Piercing Tornado. It's safe. Definitely abuse that. Number four, abuse your back Q as much as possible. Number five, you got Purge. Purge has an amazing hitbox in succession. It's really large. So definitely abuse that. You got your Shift F you can try to catch people with, but that's really risky. And finally, of course, you got Block Jump, which is cancelable in succession by iframing. So just make sure that when you block jump in succession, you just kind of go like this. And then that also puts up your Recall Tornado, which is really nice as well. So, um... Another thing to note is that to catch people is that you can make people come at you and then you can teleport and then this will land an explosion and that will CC people as well. So 
pretty much succession hash is all about playing defensive uh as far as your engaging goes it's kind of connected with your like play style of how to catch people your job as sec hash is to kill people through essay trades and what you want to do on this class is you want to play inside of your tornadoes a lot of the succession hashes that i see play they're not playing correctly they're just kind of like going for frags and whatnot but like if you're trying to play safe you need to start thinking about how to control your tornadoes in pvp because when these converge right the damage is unreal like the damage is literally unreal and like you got to start thinking like okay my nato's here my opponent's here let me throw my hill lady and if it hits them this is gonna start following now i can get some extra damage right so uh you need to start controlling your tornadoes when you fight number two if you're 1v1ing and if you're getting like pressured or if you're 1vxing you need to just start putting tornadoes out just put them out and converge them and literally put tornado put a recall away and then go inside of here don't aggro people with engages make them come in your tornadoes and don't go out of it like by all means play around these because if you can force your opponent to step in that they can't trade you the minute that damage starts to stack on top of like let's say quicksand or like Ridge Reaver, or you pop out your Shift Q, right, or Descent, and they're inside those tornadoes, you're gonna blow somebody up. Like, it's ridiculous. So, Succession Hash, it really isn't about catching people, it's about getting the SA trade damage in. When you get a catch, it's nice, but for the most part, you're trying to abuse your SA trading prowess. That's what you wanna do, and that can be pretty difficult because Succession Hash is pretty unsafe. But, if you can play the safe play slot I'm recommending to you, you're going to find yourself winning a lot of matches, and your opponent's going to get very frustrated. They're going to start complaining that you aren't aggressing them and blah blah blah. But, this is what you have to do in Succession Hash, okay? So, that's the play style and engaging route and rec I recommend. So, pretty much, you're SA trading and you're going for those catches in the meanwhile, but your main goal is you need to start thinking how you can control your tornadoes and how you can sit in that. Uh, even just like putting on this amount of gear. I, I don't even have that much gear, right? So, okay, literally, you put them out, right? You'll see the damage I'm talking about here. I'm gonna throw it at him. And if you look, one SA trade. You can't trade this class, and he has, you know, 690 gears for just about. Alright guys, so for Hashashin PvE, it's quite simple. Put up your tornadoes, right? Your pre-buff rotation. Right? And now you're just gonna do um you're gonna do shift F, collapse, silent breach, helicopter, ensnaring sands, and then by then the pack should be dead. If you need, if you're doing mobs that um, that require, uh, like for example, that require like a big DPS, like for example, Owens, mobs that require like a lot of health, tornado. This is your pre-buff here, awakening, and then do crown kick, and then just do the same rotation. That's all you have to do for uh, awakening hash. Um, for pulling mobs, you can use the purge cancel I was talking about. You can throw your Haladi throw. You can also use your Shift X Rabom for pulling mobs. You can also throw Quicksand as well. So Purge Cancel, Haladi Throw, Shift X Rabom. You can also use Rupture for mob pulling. And that should just be it. That's really easy for Awakening Hash. All right guys, so for Succession Hash, it um, the rotation is really easy. So if you're grinding up like a place where you have to stand still, so for example, like Jade Forest, Olin's, Stars End Towers, places like this, um, you're just going to want to do your tornado stacking method. So what you're going to do is you're going to free buff, right? Tornadoes, Descent, Shift Q, 
call this out. Then they're all going to converge. Iframe, Paladi throw, Dominion, do Dune Slash, Iframe, Purge, Red Reaver, and then you can do your bombs as well. And then just throw out your Shifty afterwards, and then after that just rinse repeat the rotation. That's all there is to, to, to suck hash or those kind of spots. At, um, at other grind spots, it's quite simple. Literally, it'll be pulling the mobs, so your mobs will be pulling them. It will be like with this, so with Shift X. Let's say that this is a pack right here, and this is the pack right there. You would go like this, and then both the mobs will be awakened, and they can come over to you. You can use Haladi Throw to pull, and you can use Blinding Spirals. And, of course, you can just also use your Shifty and Purge for pulling and Rupture for pulling. Those, All those tactics are a really good way for you to pull. Um, now, for the packs where you don't want to be doing that, like, let's say you're just killing a spot that's, like, pretty easy to, like, DPS down. Like, let's say Star's End um, or, like, Orcs, right? So, for Star's End and Orcs, I recommend you put out your Tornadoes like this, Descent, and then go like this. So it's really easy, right? So you'll just be doing, um, you'll be doing a DP debuff, Haladi throw, Dominion, iframe backwards, purge, red driver, and then you'll shift Q, and then the packs will be dead. Um, succession hash is very brain dead in PVE, and it is a stronger version for PVE, so I recommend you guys find on slot hash. But that is it for this hash guide. Yeah,